Good morning, Tish. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm good. Good morning, kids. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Nice to see everybody this morning. Welcome to Ask Faith Formation here at St. John's this morning. Hope everybody is awake. It's a little chilly, isn't it? It is. It's a little chilly this morning. So what we're going to do is we have a couple announcements to make this morning. We have a couple things coming up. Um, number one, pumpkin carving. Woo -woo! Woo -woo! I bought my pumpkins yesterday at the pumpkin carving. Good morning. Come on in and sit down. Sorry, we didn't tell you we were in a different room, did we? You figured it out. Good job. We came over here because we're going to get a little messy this morning. <laughs> so we're talking about the pumpkin carving that's on the 16th of Ooh. October starting at 530 bring your pumpkins I bought my pumpkin yesterday nice I am ready nice I am ready make sure what's that make sure we're done it out yeah yes Tiffany made this great um, suggestion to dig out your pumpkin and hollow it out first before coming because that saves so much time you know because all those guts in there but if you don't have time to do that it doesn't matter mm -hmm. but that's a good thing too and then on october 25th we are having our and it is october we are having a sauerkraut dinner here every year at st john's we have this annual sauerkraut dinner what's the day um october 25th 25th okay. it's a sunday at five o'clock okay um mr rick warner makes homemade sauerkraut Delicious. Angie from Meals on Wheels, our Meals on Wheels cook, will be pre-packaging individual um, meals nice. so that everybody's not, because right. of COVID, we're, we're not all dipping in the food and everything, so it's all nice. You just come up, you, you get your thing, you sit down, and we'll, we'll have everything all spread out here to eat. And then, kids, if you want to come, and adults, I'm dressing. I don't know about you. Oh, yeah. But um, we'd like to dress up for Halloween for that dinner. And we're also going to be talking about uh, what kind of future things we might want to do here at St. John's, thinking ahead in the future. So that'll be a fun night. Well, there will be no apple biting. Uh, what's that called? Apple Dog bobbing. 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 Bob. There will be no bobbing. No friends. bobbing. Aww. Well, you know, that's pretty germy. Yeah. We don't want to do that. We're not doing no, no. Do you guys really want an apple? <laughs> oh, we right. We'll, give, we'll just we give you an apple. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Free package apples. And then one other thing we're doing is saving cereal boxes. Um, so wow. if you have cereal, did you bring any cereal boxes today, guys? Oh, no. 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 Oh, we're in empty. Empty. I know you were eating cereal this week, and I know you probably forgot and threw away cereal boxes. I did. Stop just it. Just last night. Uh, what are they for? We are going to be making something and we need 66 of them. <laughs> so, I know okay. why. You better okay, start well, eating. You kids. have a guess. You probably already I'll do know yeah, why, but yeah. anyway. Bug all your friends. So, okay. Um, Tish, will you please pray us in today? Sure. Um, okay. God, we thank you for the stories Jesus uses to explain to us who he is, who he was. We learn that when we follow Jesus, we become connected to the vine. Um, let your love flow through us today and out to all the people of the world. We are connected. We are the body of Christ, the church in the world. Amen. 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 Thanks, Tish. Well, we're talking about vine and grapevines, and so we're going to get messy, and we're going to make our own piece of art today. Now... Um, this piece of art you're not going to take home, but we're going to give it, hopefully Pastor won't watch this, I'll tell him not to watch the video, because we're going to give this to Pastor Weitzel as a gift. This is, October is um, Pastor Month. Appreciate your Pastor Month. Really? Yes. And next Sunday is actually the Appreciation Day. Okay. So what we make today we're going to present to him. Aww, okay, nice. so we're going to do that. But we're going to make a grapevine and grapes with our hands and paint. Kids, you could do this at home very easily. Um, if we can pull out this from underneath. I want to hold it up here. Oh. Um, Tish, you hold it up. Okay. So over here. So all we have here is a piece of poster board 
and then I drew the main vine from the grapevine and then these are the branches and you know how grapes have these little curly squiggly vines right. on them okay so I made those with pipe cleaners you just curl a pipe cleaner poke a hole in your board and then turn it around your paper and turn it around so they can see that we just taped the back oh, and poked a hole, put the um, pipe cleaner in it and taped it so that it's stuck on the page. Now what we're gonna do is put the leaves and the grapes on this oh, grapevine. So, um, and it's going to look, I'm gonna hold this up. It's going to look something like this, Cute. okay? So your hands are the leaves. Okay, Tish, let's show them how this works. How about, can you put your hand in that green paint? Okay, I know it's messy. Come on over here and, and maybe take two hands and go like this, like you're putting lotion on. Perfect, do it. All right, now you're going to take your hands and you're going to you know, like put them around like they're leaves here and there. Awesome. Oh, if you need to get more paint, get more paint. Put it on like lotion, oh, hand lotion. Oh, oh, oh. And you know, we can put some here. Here, let me turn the paper upside down so you can get some hands. Look guys, how this is looking. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> so cool. So put some hands in different directions. Can we do a paintbrush? Just for so one kids, you can start nope. doing this now. No, Tiffany, you All can right, start getting these kids um, at I'll the table. The grapes, now this is paint that's no. just tempura that's paint. It will wash yeah, off if it gets an accidental. No, so so you can the too big. I'll, I'll, I'll do the grapes. Should we? Okay. Go? Okay. We that looks like very good. Now. We've got this much going on. If you want to use um, some of those paper towels in, or if you want to slip away into the restroom, that'll be fine to wash your hands. No, it's up to you. <laughs> it's quite messy, but how fun is it? Right? So now we're going to use our water bottle or soda bottle caps, and they're round like grapes. And this will be a little bit less messy on your hands, but we are going to. Um, no. <laughs> I let you be the. I think messy we're done. One, Natalie. You were. No. We're yeah. gonna dip it you in to hands. our purple Come paint. Come on. And then we're going to make clusters of grapes. No, so when you make right your there. grapes, you might have to spin the cap in a little circle. There we go. But, and dip it more than once if you need to. Sorry, oh, I'll okay, set it right okay, there. Okay. And grapes grow in clusters. They grow together. So when you're using your paint, you know, um, keep your grapes like all clustered together like a little family. Look at that, that looks awesome. And it gets kind of smaller at the end with one or two breaks down at the bottom. Perfect. I just don't know what to stop. Well, that's a big, big cluster of grapes. <laughs> and that's okay. That's great. There we go. I love it. Oh, they're going into the restroom to wash their hands. They can't back at the door. I know. Okay. We did a good job. Hold that side. Look at this. <gasps> That's good. Look, it only has two clusters of grapes Look on there, but it looks already. great. Yeah. So easy to make a grapevine with leaves and clusters of grapes. Be creative with your hands. You can make a leaf. And with the bottle caps or anything round, you can make grapes with. And they look great, don't they? They do. Let's sit that over there on the table and we'll let that dry for a little bit and um, we'll be good to go. Now with with grapes, grapes are growing vineyards, right? And we do a lot of things with grapes. They make things like um, 
What do you eat with grapes? What what kind of foods do you get from grapes? Can you think of any? Uh, grape juice. Grape juice. Grape juice is one. What other kind of food can you get from grapes? Wine. Wine. Uh, what do you like with? Do you like raisins? Raisins. Raisins. I love raisins because you know what? They're like they're like the second chance for a grape. <laughs> okay, so grapes. You know, this is their first chance. You know, you have your first chance and you're holding maybe 20 grapes in your hand. I'm glad you said raisins. So some, yeah, I was like, you got this many grapes in your hand, but then when they turn into raisin, you can hold like 500 raisins in your hand instead of 20 <laughs> because they're all shriveled up, but they taste different. So it's like their second chance in life. <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. And don't we all want second chances? The resurrection. Huh? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, how about um, peanut butter and jelly? jelly. Grape it's jelly. Gross. You don't like great You don't like peanut butter and jelly. I don't really. Once in a while, I'll get hungry for it, but not very often. I. You like it? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Wow. So you get a lot of things from grapes, and we see grapes um, on things like. Right here on the cover of our church bulletin, there's grapes, because we're referring to this story in our Bible um, about grapes in the vineyard. So you can get some yummy food with grapes. And in our church, sometimes you see grapes as being symbols for communion. So you see that sometimes. And so we are Oh, moving ahead with their grapes and their grape clusters there. Last week, while you guys are doing your grapes, I know you can hear me, we talked about, um, I will do what I say and say what I do. Did you guys think about that at all? Yeah. Do the week, through the week, you know, when you say you're gonna do something, you really should do it, right? Yeah. yeah. So I hope you guys thought about that, that um, during the week. And today, we have a very, maybe uncomfortable word for people, but our day today is rejection. So, wow, um, it's kind of, might be a little awkward word. You might not like that word rejection and what it means to you, but we cannot believe, and we're gonna talk about October. We can't believe it's October already. Today is October 4, and you guys have been in school for a few weeks or being, doing school at home, either one. I'm sure you've been um, interacting with your friends and did you ever feel rejected at school? Yeah, all the time. All the time, see, that's not good. So sometimes we feel rejection at school and Nyla? Yes. Can you give me um, an example of feeling rejected at school? Um, you're not included in the conversation. Um, um, sometimes you get laughed at, maybe? Sometimes you get laughed at, and that's a form of rejection. You know it. <clears throat> when somebody laughs at you, sometimes if you're telling a story and somebody laughs, you're like, oh, are they talking about me? <laughs> you know, you kind of think somebody's talking about you, and yeah, that's a very good one, Nyla. And kids at home, I, I'm sure that you're feeling some kind of rejection. Um, which means, you know, saying no to somebody pretty much mm -hmm. for, for one reason or another. I know a couple of things too in yeah. school. Um, having to sit alone at lunch because nobody lets you sit at the right. table. Yep. And being picked last in gyms. Uh, and I, I, need, oh yeah. I think they need to stop that in schools, honestly. I know. When you're picking teams or picking mm -hmm. somebody and you yeah. get picked last, that is such a downer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But we have to remember, God is here with us all the time. Yep. So he's there with us through our rejections also. So we're going to be hearing a story today in the Bible about rejection from the book of Matthew, which is in the New or Old Testament? New. New Testament. Very good. So with um, the word rejection, um, we need to remember in our own lives, okay, not to laugh any, at anyone who might have different clothes or might have holes in their clothes or they might be wearing their hair kind of funky, green or red. So what? You know? And um, you have to um, be more forgiving and practice accepting 
differences among all of us in our lives. Because if we were all the same, it'd just be boring. That's very true. That is very true. So, um, American Sign Language, is the paint off your hands pretty good? Can you do this sign language, guys? Okay. All right. Show me forgiveness first. We did forgiveness the first week. Each week, we're going to go over them. To, oh, Look at that. come show us. That looks good. Come show us what the kids did. Woo! That looks beautiful, good. beautiful grapevine. Good job, guys. I love it. Thanks, Miss Tiffany. And you know what? There is a, a black permanent marker. By the end of the day today, we're going to write thank you to Pastor White Soul on there after they dry a little bit. Okay? Let's not forget that. Forgiveness. Two yeah. fingers across your palm. Okay? Forgiveness. Then generous was giving. Three times with your hands. For generous. And then last week was action. Do you remember action? No. Uh, it was, yeah, that. Action. Okay? Mm -hmm. Kind of makes sense when you think about it. And now rejection today is... Kind of looks like rejection, doesn't it? Like, I feel like I've seen that on the news. You might have, like, as they're talking. Or something like that. I know it, when you when you see news and you see um, things and you have this other person to the side doing the sign language. Now you'll be looking a little closer yeah. at what they're doing. Okay, yeah. so today rejection, which is not a warm, touchy feeling. Why are they all sign. like this? Well, Besides not all of them are. Not all of them are. It just is a coincidence that three of the ones we've learned might might have been that. How do you say green in Spanish? Verde. 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 Very good. Green for Pentecost. We are in the season of Pentecost here in our church season. And um, we need to remember that. That's why we have, why we have green around. And green is a season of growth and learning stories about Jesus, right? So what crops do you know are ready to pick right now in, in oh. gardens and things like that? What do you Corn? see? A big one. A big one that's... Uh, Pumpkin. Pumpkins. Pumpkins. What else might be ready to um, <laughs> harvest right now that you see farmers maybe Apples. around? Apples. Apples. Melons. Melons. It's not a right or wrong answer. Squash. Squash. Cucumber? What about the field corn? I want corn. What about the, the um, stalks of corn, corn that again. they're cutting now? for? That's mostly right now they're cutting for the um, animals. animals, right? Because our good fresh sweet corn in Lancaster County is about done. But, so we have harvest of, of grapes. Okay, grapes are being harvested. Um, I drive, um, I have a neighbor that has grapevines and they look, they're like heavy with grapes. Every time I drive by, I want to say, aren't you going to pick those grapes yet? Because I would really like to do it for you. But, so everybody has different tastes and food and activities and everything and everybody should always be made welcome and we should welcome anybody in our church if we have somebody in our church that comes in that um, might be dressed in shorts cut off shorts or something and maybe a torn shirt would we reject them no oh, I, don't I once wore uh, my holy jeans to work or er, to church did you yeah i got rejected and i was told to <gasps> go change uh -uh. but thankfully I'm, I'm here okay that wasn't this church i hope no oh man well, you can think of the word holy jeans. That's kind of fun, isn't I know. it? Yeah, I know. So here we don't reject anyone at our church no. for no reason at all. At least I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a joke. So we're going to talk about um, this story in the Bible. Um, whose vineyard is it anyway? But first, we are going to watch this really cool video okay and that'll set us up for our bible story so let's see if we can turn our camera um to our
rudest Sunday school ever. I know. Why would all those people want to get rid of Jesus? I was talking about the snacks. It's hard to believe that anyone would reject someone as amazing as Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who puts radishes in yogurt? What are you talking about? I don't know. Hey, that reminds me. Has anyone met the new kid? Who's this? You're talking about Bert. Oh, yeah. He's a total bully. Bert the bully? Oh, that's cute. Cute is not the word I'd use to describe him. He's huge. He's like six feet tall. And he already has to shave. Whoa, really? And he's got all these scars. And an eye patch. And a kid named Herman. You know what I heard? I heard he breaks into other people's lockers at school. I heard that he kicked over Mr. Cooper's trash cans. I heard he collects knives. I heard he sends inappropriate text messages. I heard that the house he lives in is haunted and that even the ghosts are scared of him. school. Guys? Have any of you even met Bert? No. Uh, guys? Then how do you even know if it's true? Look, I'm telling you, this Bert, Bert. guy is a total menace. Hi! <gasps> church cemetery because I can't be seen with you anymore what why because you've been hanging out with Bert so so it's Bert we're never gonna hear the end of it at school who cares what they think I like Bert he's a good guy wait you aren't gonna start bringing him to church are you why wouldn't I church is supposed to be a safe welcoming place I don't want Bert waltzing in there and scaring my grandma can you even hear yourselves right now? Look, Leo, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to socially distance ourselves from you for the time being. Mm -hmm. You know, until this whole thing blows over. If it ever does. It's like he has COVID. <laughs> Radishes and yogurt. Oh my god. I thought it was a weapon. I thought the church was a weapon. Look up to be a really bad, bad guy, didn't they? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, kids, what happened when Ruby and Gabe and Mimi um, talked about Bert before they even met him? They made him sound like a monster. They made him sound terrible, didn't they? And what kind of things, like, how does that happen? Gossip. Yeah. Gossip. Rumors. Rumors and gossip. I heard he makes flower arrangements. Heard through the grapevine. Very good. <laughs> heard it through the grapevine. <laughs> That's right. So sometimes those things are not true, are they? Nope. So it's painting a picture already of poor Bert because he's kind of a large dude, right? I wanted to see and him. so what were they? I know. I know. What were they afraid of? Him. Just like the rumors? They were afraid of the rumors more than they were afraid of him, weren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so how does it feel to be rejected? It hurts. It hurts a lot. Yeah, it hurts an awful lot. So what I'm going to do is talk to them about this Bible story now. Because we're talking about rejection, you're probably like, Where's, where's all this going? So there is this parable in the Bible. And what's a parable? Somebody? A story. A story. Who t who's telling the story? Who's telling the story? Who's telling the story of a, pa a parable? Who tells us parables? What's a parable? Oh my God. 
gosh. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Very good. You know what a parable is. It's the story that Jesus tells. That teaches. Yeah. He's, he's telling us very important stories about himself and God um, and messages. It's more like a message from God. And he ta tells stories. He calls them parables because it's a story about everyday people, everyday places, everyday things to make us connect and figure out what the story is telling us, Nathan. Okay? So, um, many people loved Jesus's parables, but who did not like Jesus's parables? The Pharisees. The Pharisees Cause they, hated. Because they knew everything. Yeah, they knew everything. And sometimes they were in that position to feel like they were being talked about. They actually were afraid that Jesus was talking about them. So they kind of felt that little bit of rejection there, didn't they? Although I don't think they really thought about it that way, but they think they were most important guys and they were too important to have somebody talk about them and what they said was law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one of the parables Jesus told, okay? You're gonna be the tenants, okay? So a vineyard owner, a guy who owns this great big vineyard of grapes, he rented his land, okay, to tenants who lived there and grew grapes. Okay, so they lived there and they grew the grapes. When it was time to harvest the grapes, even though they lived there, they had to, I mean, harvest the grapes, but they also had to pay rent for the place that they lived. Okay, so they were workers, but they also had to pay rent for their little homes. Now, did you ever play Monopoly, Tish? Oh, yeah. Anybody ever here play Monopoly? Uh, so, yeah. you know, what happens when somebody lands on a property that you own in Monopoly? You have to pay them. You have to pay them rent, right? So, I'm going to land on, this is not Monopoly. But I'm going to land on Boardwalk. Oh, that's expensive. Oh, that's an expensive piece of property. Okay. It. Then you got to show off that money um, for the rent. Okay. Most people all have to pay rent wherever they live. Okay. So at harvest time, he was, the owner sent messengers, okay, to collect the rent from those workers that the tenants who lived and the, the messengers said hey give us the rent give us the money for the for the owners and then the tenants were like no way what do you mean? no we did all the hard work we get to keep it oh oh they did all the hard work and they feel like they need to keep all the rent money well Two times the vineyard owner. Boy, that's greedy. Two times the vineyard <laughs> owner sent messengers out to collect the money from the tenants, and two times the tenants hurt the messengers, <gasps> beat no. them up, and they were not very nice to the messengers. No. <laughs> Don't do that. Anymore. That was yes. Do not do that's this. That's not at nice. Home. <laughs> I'm a mean tenant. You are. You're acting the part. Jeez. <laughs> now, why did the tenants hurt my messengers? The vineyard owner was, like, so perplexed, you know? He, he has these people living on his land. Yes, they work for him, but they also have to pay their rent for their little places that they live. I'm sure they were nice little little um, cottages that they lived at, but they did not want to pay the rent. They wanted nope. to be greedy and keep it all. Mm -hmm. So he thought, why did they hurt the messengers? He thought, hmm, this time I am going to send out my son. Nathan, would you like to be the son? <laughs> sure. Come here. Come on up. Round of applause. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. So 
this time, the, I'll be the vineyard owner. I'm sending my son to the tenants, and you need to ask the tenant to collect rent. They, they surely will not hurt my son. Surely they will not. Okay? Ask the tenant. Wait, what was my line? Um, what you need to do is ask them for rent money, please. Say it nicely. Can I have some rent money, please? No. <gasps> she rejected you, and you know what? Oh, and you know what they did to the son? The tenants actually killed the son. <gasps> oh, my. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. They did. They actually, terrible, terrible tenants. They killed the son. That's terrible. That's not nice. Yeah. So, you know, here we are, we have the vineyard owner who sent messengers the first two times and then his son the third time, thinking, oh, the tenants wouldn't hurt his son. Well, that backfired on him. So this is the story Jesus told. So Jesus told this story and he said, the Pharisees are like the workers. My father sent me to the world. Okay, but the Pharisees think the whole world belongs to them, and they will want to hurt me. So Jesus is the one being rejected. Yeah, so he has this forethought. He always thinks ahead. He has this premonition, and he knows what's going to happen to him, uh, what happens on right before Easter. Oh, and the messengers Jesus are dies on the disciples. cross. The messengers are his disciples. It could be. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. So the story that he's telling is about his rejection. And we should not be rejecting anyone in our lives. And we should not be the tenants in the vineyard. We should not be rejecting anyone in our lives. And Jesus is telling this story to the Pharisees who think they are big. They own the world. They can do anything they want. And they want to hurt Jesus. They want to hurt him. So they looked around a little nervously after Jesus told this story because the Pharisees knew then he was talking about them. He was telling this story mostly about the Pharisees and how they were rejecting Jesus. And who was Jesus and what was he doing for us in the world? What was Jesus trying to do when he was in the world? Save everyone. And he was trying to teach us. He was teaching us to be good people. He was teaching us not to reject anyone. Right. And the Pharisees were trying to reject. reject him. Do we reject Jesus in our world? Sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, how? By not following the commands. Hmm. commandments. Not following the commandments. That's one. There's, there's many ways. I mean, there's many ways. We, we do sin. We do things wrong. But he forgives us because yeah. we know that. But we don't reject him. Go ahead. Yeah, I know a time when I, like, when I go to Google for help. Oh, yeah? For some things that God, it's in God's hands. So. Yeah, it is. So, it is. Not Google. And, you know. Thank goodness um, for that. <laughs> Yay. Lord. I know. What? The Ten Commandments, she did not even, she gave me the right answer. Our first commandment, we're going to go over the Ten Commandments a little bit each week. The very first commandment is, you shall have no other gods. We are to fear, love, and trust God above all things. Now, the word fear God is kind of hard to hear, fear, um, but it's more like, it's more like uh, respect. Respect, God. Good job. Yeah, it's more like a respect, not be afraid, but more like respect, God. So you shall have no other gods before me. 
And if the world is a vineyard, vineyard, are we the tenants? No. Wait, yeah. Wait, no. I don't know. Are we the owners or are we the messengers? Both. We're both the tenants and the messengers because we tell people about God and Jesus, but then we also think like our fate and our world is, a, is our own. We trust and ourselves. Yeah, we trust I ourselves. I think we're a little bit of every single one yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. So, um, let's remember how important it is not to reject others and not to reject Jesus in our lives as well. That's the most important thing. And everyone is welcome in our church. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, and we are, one more story I wanted to tell you about rejection. Do you guys know, you guys know Dr. Seuss? Oh, I love him. Yeah. I love Dr. This is a really old Dr. <laughs> Seuss, Seuss book. Old it's Dr. an Seuss old book. Dr. Seuss book what that I had. That? This is 1957. Oh, I, I read that one. This is an old That's book. so cool. And Dr. Seuss oh, was a wonderful, wonderful child, Arthur. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you know he was rejected? He was rejected. Do you remember how many times? 27. 27 times he was rejected by a publishing company with his first book, the Mulberry Street book. You know, you guys know that one? That was this first one that went into print. He was rejected 27 times. Wow. And on the last time he was rejected, he was walking with his buddy down the street. His buddy was just graduated college, I, if I remember the story correctly. And he was talking to him and the, the, his buddy said, well, what do you got there in, in your heart? And he says, well, he says, a transcript for my book he says this is the 27th time it was rejected I'm gonna take this home and throw it away okay. his friend just that morning got a job at a publishing company no way way and his friend said give me that I'm, I'll publish I'm it. gonna take this I, I got a new job and not quite sure but this is my first and well he took it and off he went he got it they put it in published and well we all know dr. Seuss to this day don't we yeah. and dr. Seuss now if I ran the circus I love this book it's a really good book um, I think God was in there somewhere, don't you? Yeah. He was soon ready to throw away his whole life. His whole and career. somebody came. We may and never have known Dr. We Seuss. We may have never known Dr. Seuss if his buddy didn't get that job at that publishing company Can and decide. Well, I no. mean, if this is where this clip comes in. Um, it's on God's time, not ours. It is on God's time, not ours. Mm -hmm. Everything is, and we need to trust that, it's, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I wanted to share that with you guys because I thought that was a pretty, pretty cool um, story. So, I'm going to say a short prayer to um, pray us out today. And um, thank you. Yes, I remember. I knew you did. And then we are going to say the Lord's Prayer all together. Okay. Okay, after this short one. Let us pray. God. You gave us Jesus who showed us a way of life that was so different that people rejected him. Help us be kind to others so that we are not the ones rejected. Now let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. And we all say a big Amen. 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 Oh, she did it. I did. She did it. Okay, let's do um, our one song before we leave today, um, Nyla. Um, we're going to do our burger song because we didn't get to that. Um, this is just a fun thing. Okay, we tried to do this song. It's an old throwback McDonald's. Um, we were talking about this when we were talking about um, um, when we were talking about being generous, generous helping of burger. Okay, it's two whole beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Okay, ready? Two whole beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese. Pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Okay, next time, let's, we're going to do it real fast. One more time. Run, two, ready. Two whole beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Bam! See you next week. I'm dead. No, you're not.